thirteen, Tessa Hong is already a two-time national champion, winning the juvenile title in 2012 and the intermediate title in 2014. Originally from Southern California, Hong has trained under some of the most decorated coaches in the sport, including John Nix and Frank Carroll. The young phenom is known for her flexibility, spins, and technical content far beyond her years, and was expected last season to easily qualify for nationals on the novice level. However, a freak fall at the Pacific Coast Regional Championships last October forced Hong to withdraw from the event, thus ending her season. The fall took place during the final round of the competition. While Hong was performing her footwork, she hit her head, causing the referee to stop her music. She was then unable to finish her program. Tessa explains the incident in her own words. I fell forward and I lightly hit my head during my footwork, and so、um, the referee withdrew me from the competition, and I was very devastated because I couldn't advance to sectionals, and so I lost basically a season. So it was very sad. Tessa's mother, Myung Hong, sat in the stands feeling helpless during the experience. In retrospect, she feels strongly that the situation was poorly handled, and Tessa should not have been forced by the referee to withdraw from the competition. It was devastating because I was on the second floor, and before Tessa even fell on her、uh, footwork sequence, there was a sound, a blast that went off. It was almost like a toy gun, but it was extremely loud. And before she even fell, I knew that something terrible was going to happen. And sure enough, right when that blast, that sound hit, split second, Tessa fell. But we thought that was part of the fall. So her fall was, a, in actuality, much greater than what it was. And、uh, not knowing anything, you know, rushed down to her and being told that she was withdrawn、uh, was. First thought was, okay, I need to take her to the hospital. I need to see if this, she's okay because there's a possible, you know, concussion. And so, I took her to the hospital. Within three minutes, she was discharged. They said she did not have a head concussion. There's certain things that will show much later, but、uh, there's three things that will definitely show when somebody has a head concussion. She definitely doesn't have it. So, we were only there for three minutes, and so. You know, it was very, very shocking and devastating. And when I heard Tessa's story, you know, she wanted to resume her program. She was taken off the ice after a minute and 23 seconds, I believe. And、uh, you know, and there was no test that was performed on her to see if she had a head concussion. There was no medical personnel there. And the competition was still going on when we were at the hospital. And somebody did call from the hosting、uh, club, asking if she was there at the hospital. And so yes, and we told them that、uh, I, we gave the authorization to the hospital staff that it was okay to release that information. And I thought that she had the time to go back because competition was still going on, but they refused. So it was very devastating. And you know, only a mom could know. You know, when something like this happens, you know, for me, it's just you know, safety of my child. But for her, it's a whole year of training that just. You know, just for that one moment, and you know, at that time,、um, all the、uh, local competitions, she was number one in the nation, and even at regionals, you know, she won the qualifying round, she won the short program, and it was in the final free skate that this happened. But there's a valuable lesson that we learned, and that is、uh, for Tessa, that sound could have triggered her to just lose that focus at that moment, and. You know, she learned that you know, you know, anything could happen. Sound, scent, you know, things happen at the rink, and she now knows to be very, very focused. And another problem was she didn't have a head coach there with her. She had her choreographer,、uh, Yevin Mock, who was there、um, that put her on the ice. And、uh, Miss Yevin did not know not know that situation, what she needed to do. So I think that's, you know, a big. Cause of her not being able to continue. Mrs. Hong ended up filing a grievance a few weeks after the incident against the referee. On November 18, 2014, an expedited appellate panel issued its statement of decision, dismissing the grievance, finding that the referee violated no rules of U.S. figure skating. 
During the same period, Tessa suffered tendonitis in her knee, keeping her off the ice. While she worked through her recovery, Tessa and her mother took a trip to Colorado Springs to spend a few days working with U.S. Olympic coach Tom Zakrychak. Tessa didn't have a head coach uh, from June of last year, and um, she was working with uh, Miss Yevon Mock, who did Tessa's choreography from June. And uh, you know, we wanted to wait till the season was finished before uh, Tessa tries out with a new coach. But having had the experience of working with uh, Coach Tom at the Challenge Skate last year in Utah in July, Tessa really had a great report with him. And um, you know, just really loved his work ethic. I mean, his, he was just right on his, his timing and just organization, and sending me numerous texts as far as you know when he's going to meet us, where he's going to meet us, and you know the type of training. And so we were very impressed. So in February, we had uh, made the uh, reservation to be here for Tessa to try out with Coach Tom. Um, not mainly to just try out because I think we kind of knew that he would be the head coach for Tessa, but just wanting to know if this was the right training environment. The tendonitis in Tessa's knee was getting progressively worse, with an ultimate diagnosis of Osgood Schlatter's. This kept her away from heavy training for most of the 2014-2015 season. During this period, however, a coaching change brought with it a positive tone to an otherwise disappointing time in young Tessa's career. Tessa, since last year, for about six months was not training at all. Uh, she was doing maybe one session of ice dance just so that she has her you know, posture and just her centering on the ice. But you know, she did not do any jumps because at first it was a tendonitis and we were just waiting for that to heal and it didn't heal. <laughs> it turned into a slaughter. So um, during that time, nothing. And then Tessa came in February for the tryout. We were here for originally two weeks to try out with Coach Tom and to see if we liked the environment. And then we stayed an additional two weeks so that she could get uh, free skate choreography from uh, Mr. Tom Dixon. And uh, you know, during that time, you know, even the short time that we were here, he was just great. I mean, not having jumped for such a long time, Tessa was here. She was doing her triple triple combos and you know, she was fine. We got the okay, you know, because at that time it was a tendonitis that she had. And um, he was phenomenal. And then we went back to LA and um, she was doing art therapy and supposedly that was supposed to heal her tendonitis. But during that time when she was off for two weeks, she got the Oscar Schlatter. You know, she formed that bump right below the kneecap and no skating. And then we moved here. And so uh, Tessa's actually been skating from May of this year till now and made such wonderful progress. And uh, we're just, all of that has to do with Coach Tom. I mean, he just knows what she's capable of. And he's fantastic because he not just, he doesn't just push. He made sure that Tessa had the okay. Uh, he contacted, contacted his doctor, Dr. Sands. He's one of the trusted uh, doctors that Coach Tom, you know, works closely with. And, you know, uh, Tessa met with him FaceTime and he explained everything to Tessa. And, you know, with Tessa, all she needed was that information saying, okay, you have Oscar Schlatter. But, you know, there's a lot of athletes, top Olympic athletes that have this. And they even go to the Olympics, you know, with this. And, you know, you're going to have this until possibly until you stop growing. So, you know, you're okay to train. And so I think that's what Tessa needed because until that time, you know, she also wanted to heal completely. Uh, health is very important. And uh, she was looking for long term. And uh, so after that, once Coach Tom realized that, okay, it's okay. I, go, I know how much I could push Tessa. That's when the work, work began and tremendous uh, improvement. Tessa shares her mother's sentiments about her new head coach and has quickly learned to adjust to changes in her training routine. Before I never redid the sections like three times afterwards, but um, I've been having to do that like once a week and I think it has helped because uh, I have to do it when I'm tired and so it's good training so that I can do it when I'm tired. In addition to increased stamina training, Zakrychek has added two new triple combinations to Hong's repertoire. This is a necessary challenge for Tessa in order to contend against the best junior ladies in the world. It's pretty hard. I have to land the first jump well in order for the second jump to go well, so <laughs> I'm working on getting it consistent and clean. 
it makes the program harder and um, I have to be very mentally focused in order to land them <laughs> in the program. Tessa placed a promising six at her first international competition, a Junior Grand Prix event earlier this year in Spain. With the goal of becoming the U.S. Junior Ladies National Champion this January, Tessa has kept her eye on the up-and-coming crop of Russian ladies, which keeps her motivated while working to earn herself a place on the podium at future international events. I watch their programs and what they're doing, and I know what I need to like get to become a top junior lady. Yeah. And what do you think that is? What will it take to? I think I'll have to get a clean triple triple and uh, probably a double axle triple toe and probably a half loop triple style combo. Yeah. While Tessa focuses on her necessary short term goals, Mrs. Hong holds to a bigger vision for her daughter. This vision has helped the two during the periods of adversity Mrs. Hong feels they have faced and she believes will continue to aid them through any future challenges. For Tessa, she loves to give to people. She believes that the talent and everything that she has comes from God and she wants to bring joy, she wants to be a blessing and you know maybe it might have not been skating but this is something that she enjoys that she's good at and so for her she wants to do that and her goal to go to the Olympics is just for that reason to reach out to the millions of people that will watch and that she's able to share you know, the gift that she has received and to bring that joy and to be a blessing to so many people. And uh, that's the reason why she loves to skate. That joy will be on display this weekend at the Midwestern Sectional Championships where Tessa will work to leave the experience of last season behind her and earn herself a spot as a junior lady at Nationals this January.